Hi, this is James Tanner, and we're here with a new BYU or Brigham Young University webinar in the R webinar series. I'd like to remind our viewers that these webinars are being uploaded and recorded on the BYU Family History Library YouTube channel. We'd also like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and receive notifications of future webinars. Today we're going to talk about FindMyPast.com, and this is an interesting program. Over the past couple of years, FindMyPast has made a, a dramatic move into becoming a much more uh, useful and uh, part of the genealogical community. In fact, it is aggressively growing at a, at a tremendous rate. Each week I receive email notifications of the uh, new records added to uh, Find My Past, and each week I see numbers in the, in the millions of records that are being added. And I would also suggest that there's some other reasons. First of all, Find My Past is the premier location online for doing research in the Great Britain, in the British Isles, in England, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland. Uh, there are no other websites that have as many records as uh, Find My Past in these areas. In addition, there are some other, uh, some other ex reasons why you would want to listen, uh, use this particular website. Over, there are one, over 1,000 exclusive collections not found online, online anywhere else on findmypast.com, and they have over 2 billion records. Well, 1 billion of those records are from the British Isles. They also have a substantial collection of records from Canada, New Zealand, Australia, uh, South Africa, the British Indian colonies, uh, some of the other records that, from the outlying part of the British Empire that are very important. Now, in order to become, uh, to use uh, Find My Pass, you need a subscription. Uh, you can use it to pay as you go. Uh, this is fairly common uh, in, um, with websites in online that uh, you can get uh, buy certain number of views or, or certain records. Uh, the, particularly, we've seen this in uh, countries like Sweden and uh, other places. The reason why this occurs is because in England, the crown holds copyright to all of the government documents. Basically, only those documents that are allowed to be reproduced online are available without paying the government for a copy of the documents. And this, this uh, applies to um, particularly to records on findmypast.com. So for this reason alone, it is important to, um, to, to review your subscription service. Uh, when you go into Find My Past and you find a document, a reference to a document, it may be in an index. And if you try to uh, to see the original document, you may need to go uh, purchase it directly from um, from the government. Another method of doing subscription is to subscribe monthly, although you do get some savings on the cost of the subscription if you do that, if you subscribe annually. One of the biggest challenges of uh, doing geneal genealogical research is the fact that many of our ancestors have names that are similar or very much the same. And uh, even the dates uh, associated and the place associated with those people may be uh, almost exactly the same. And differentiating between all of these different individuals uh, can be a real challenge. Um, of course, you're looking here at a picture of, of uh, people that uh, you might be related to, a large group, 
Um, by the way, um, I sometimes feel like I'm related to Legos because I, uh, all my grandchildren, uh, get Legos for their birthdays and Christmas and other gifts that they receive. This seems to be the mandatory gift among uh, my grandchildren right now. But uh, all that aside, we still have a, a great deal of difficulty differentiating between um, ancestors with the same or similar name. Now to give an idea, one of the one of the advantages of Find My Past is that it has a tremendously powerful search engine uh, that uh, is uh, can be used in a way to create a database. Now, some of these techniques I used previously to uh, using Find My Past, but I had to do this manually uh, using either a spreadsheet or some other method of determining the numbers of people uh, that were involved in this particular process. The idea here is that you need to have an have a concept of how much of your genealogy is, how much of your family surnames are, how many of your family surnames are available in each of the areas that you're searching. The reason for this is that um, if you have a very common surname, you have different challenges than if your name is, uh, if the surname is quite, is unique or unique in a particular area. Uh, so to do this, for example, here, I can do a general search on Find My Past in the United Kingdom records. I mark two uh, of the fields on the uh, slide that are shown on this slide. First of all, I put in the name. In this case, I'm going to do a search for my Parkinson ancestor uh, around the United Kingdom. So those are the only two entries I'll make into the um, into the form, into the search form. When I do that, I get some results here. And in this case, I have 603,904 individuals in the United Kingdom in the records on on Find My Past uh, that are um, that are Parkinson's. Uh, obviously, these are unworkable results. Uh, there's no way in the universe that I could find uh, my ancestors in this huge pile of, of records. Now, what this brings up is a common problem because what I see on family trees online uh, and in other locations when I'm looking and helping patrons is we at the Brigham Young University Live, Family History Library is I will see a uh, reference to someone, for example, uh, Mary born in Ohio in, in about 1850. Well, this does not at all identify the individual. There's just uh, no way of being able to determine which of the many Marys uh, lived in Ohio and uh, in what time period without a specific location. In fact, the only way that you can uh, make a determination of who these people are is by finding the location with uh, an extreme level of specificity. Doing this, uh, using a name without uh, a specific geographic location associated uh, and, a, and a more definite date is like fishing with a gun in a rowboat. If you go out in the middle of a lake with a gun and uh, you expect to hit a fish and you start shooting into the water, uh, you're not going to have much chance. And this is even a, a, a bigger uh, possibility of failure if you're looking for a specific fish. So as a genealogist, if you're looking for a specific ancestor in a pool of hundreds of thousands of ancestors with the same surname, you may, you may very easily find the wrong person. Uh, I just recently examined a pedigree for an individual who uh, asked me to take a look at his pedigree. And uh, within the two generations, I discovered that there was a very, very distinct possibility that they had, uh, his family had uh, researched, uh, chosen the wrong family line, and were now following a family line which, to which he did not belong. So, first of all, to get into using the Find My Past analytical tools that are built into the search engine, you need to edit the search. So we've done a gen I did a general search of the surname in all of, uh, of the United Kingdom, 
so now I'm going to go ahead and add in a, a few additional facts. First of all, I'm going to put in the first name of my ancestor. And now I'll be looking for all of the Charles P Parkinson's in the United Kingdom and do another search. Oh, in this case, I have come up with 12,921 results. Uh, it, and uh, this, once again, is an, is an unworkable number. And so I will need to get some additional information. So what is important to do here is to focus on the geographic location. There are a couple of rules that go along with this. First of all, you must start with a known location. You have to actually know where an event in your ancestor's life occurred uh, very, very specifically. And so uh, this may require you to come forward in time to go to the children, the grandchildren, the descendants of the ancestor to, uh, to correctly identify a location that's associated with a documented, uh, uh, some kind of document or rec record. The second thing would be to identify the locations correctly. Um, there is a standardized way of identifying locations used by genealogists for a number of years. That's from the smallest geographical location to the larger inclusive geographic location. So we put city, uh, county, state, country in our locations to allow future users, people who are viewing our data, to determine whether or not we have been accurate. Now, the problem here is that uh, I find particularly in England and in uh, Scandinavian countries, Wales, Scotland, any place, uh, most of the places in Europe, as a matter of fact, and particularly uh, in areas where there are, uh, where the names are not in, uh, place names are not English place names, the people do have a tendency to mix up their locations. Well, this is not particularly a problem until you try to identify the next person in the family line, the, the follow the pedigree back into, in time. Uh, because if you have the wrong location or you have a wrongly identified location, you may very well uh, make a, a wrong decision as to the person that, uh, the relationship that you find in the records. And in the third case, the location, as I mentioned earlier, must be as precise as possible. In, in some instances, this it would be necessary to have uh, even down to the house or farm level uh, in order to differentiate one individual from another or to properly constitute a family. Um, this may or may not be possible, depending on the amount of information available in the records, but it's certainly in England uh, and other of the uh, countries in the United Kingdom that, that it is possible to get down to the county level and um, very, very, and most frequently down to a parish level for either the church or the civil parishes. Over the years, I've uh, had a lot of people come to me and talk about their, um, uh, what they, how they've done their genealogy and that they're at a br at brick wall, they call them uh, dead end, and, and uh, they come and ask for some help. And I usually hear something like this, well, our family or whoever, the individual, have been researching for our grandfather, great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather, whoever, for many, many years, 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, another fill-in-the-blank situation. And we have even hired professional genealogists to do the research for us. And, uh, of course, uh, my question about this time is, well, uh, why are you coming to me if you've done all this work? But in, in any event, I hear them out, and then they say, and we've looked everywhere. Well, first of all, it would be impossible for someone to look at all the documents that pertain to uh, any particular location or individual because... Some of those documents are not are not available readily, 
and it's very it's very doubtful that any person during their lifetime would have the time to look at every single possible document. But in any event, assuming that that uh, that they've done a lot of research, uh, as I have examined what they've told me and and looked at it carefully and critically, I find that a vast number of of instances, and I'm going to put a number of more than 80% of the time, the difficulty has been created by looking in the wrong place. In other words, it's all too easy get off, to get off the track when you ignore the need to find precise locations where events in your ancestors' lives occurred. So it, this is one of the, the most important um, rules that you can follow in doing genealogical research is always maintain contact with a place. Once you lose contact with a place, once you're off to uh, an ancestor who was born in England or an ancestor who was born in Scotland or an ancestor who was born in Kentucky or Tennessee, you basically have no information for making a decision about whether or not the person, uh, a person that you find is really your ancestor. So uh, keep, keep the trail of, of uh, places going. Uh, it may be possible to, uh, it is possible of course to extend family lines across oceans and around the world, but uh, you need to be uh, firmly fastened to the geographic location. Now, uh, so we have, uh, we can do a little bit more information here. By, by looking at the birthplaces of the records that we have found about this uh, particular Parkinson family, and Charles Parkinson in particular, uh, we can uh, identify uh, the county in which the, uh, the family lived. So I can do the, the search again. This time I can put in Charles Parkinson, and I can add one more fact. I can put in Huntingdonshire, England. Now, this is an interesting uh, instance here of what's, what you need to watch out for in doing genealogical research. Huntingdonshire no longer exists as such in England as a county. It has been replaced by Cambridgeshire in part. So there's parts of Huntingdonshire that were incorporated in other uh, jurisdictions and part that were incorporated into Cambridgeshire. And this happened very recently. And uh, so uh, what you're going to see on many records is that, that um, where these people lived was in Cambridgeshire. But uh, in reality, at the time that the events occurred, the entire area was Huntingdonshire. So it may require you to look in both places in order to determine which one is the uh, one that predominates and is the one that was used by the people cataloging the, uh, the records. Okay, in this case, I get 12 results. Well, that cuts it down considerably since there are only 12 Charles Parkinson's in um, Huntingdonshire. Uh, I can uh, easily look at each of the records and make a determination if any of them or if all of them or if some of them are um, uh, related to me and are part of this family that I'm searching for. Now, I use this particular uh, uh, method of looking at the records in Find My Search to find a, another Charles Parkinson who turned out to be the son of Charles Parkinson, the one I was searching for, and in fact was a new person that had not previously been identified. Uh, the reason why this occurred was because I found them in a, in a death record, a burial record actually, on the National Burial Index. And in, uh, in the records that were shown, it uh, stated that he had not been baptized. This means that he would have not, not appear on a parish register. And so uh, he had not previously been found by any of the, the people in my family who were doing this kind of research. Now, it's very important that after you've gone through this process of um, looking for and coming up with a series of names uh, that uh, is a little bit reduced from what you may have 
uh, seen initially with the total number of surnames, uh, that you spend the time to examine the results carefully. In this case, look at the dates, uh, look at the places, make sure everything is consistent with the information that you've already gathered. If you do make a determination that this is your, um, your ancestor, uh, you'll find that your ability to find your ancestors will proportionately increase to the extent that you go through a process to verify and uh, assure yourself that you are not only uh, tying together your ancestors by documentary evidence, but that the documentary evidence is consistent with the geographic areas in which your ancestors may have lived. One of the most common things that I see uh, in examining uh, pedigrees and, and uh, family group records for, for patrons at the library is uh, when I see a group of uh, people, as I have just recently, where uh, the father is born in one place, the mother is born in the same place, each of the children are born in, in uh, different counties. Well, this may or may not make sense depending on uh, the particular circumstances of that family, but having a uh, diverse uh, number of uh, locations in the same family for birth records and for death records uh, at least suggests that additional research should be done. Uh, in most of the cases, this is, should be coupled with the time depth of uh, how this may have uh, how these records may have been created and um, the time depth is very important because the further you go back in time the more important it is that the family unit be found within a small area uh, it was very difficult for many people to travel um, historically and uh, when you see birth death, birth records that uh, scatter the country all over the countryside, you need to make sure that you've actually got a relative who have the ability to travel and, um, and can verify that it is the same family. Okay, now find my past as uh, just a few years ago incorporated a family tree and their family tree has been developing rather rapidly into a very useful um, online family tree source. Uh, here what we can see is that there are some orange colored dots, maybe not quite orange on your screen, but it is orange uh, on mine, and those dots uh, represent record hints. And uh, this is uh, one of the things that the larger gen genealogical, online genealogical programs are doing right now is adding in automated record hints, looking through their records with the information that's in the family tree in your family tree and providing you with suggested records that may match the individuals that you have in your tree. In this case, you watch for these record hints and by clicking on them you can see the records that, uh, that they are suggesting may apply to your people. In this particular case, after I found the records in uh, by doing searches through the records and doing the uh, analysis, I uh, discovered that uh, Find My Past had already identified as record hints uh, the same records that I found by doing my own research. So in a lot of cases, I would suggest that uh, the way that uh, these record hints are working and the accuracy of the record hints um, makes it unnecessary to do a lot of the basic research that we have done in the past. Um, you simply need to go in and, and evaluate and see whether or not the record hits are um, really your person. In this, in this uh, regard, I would suggest that you check the record hints carefully. Look at the information, make sure it's your person, make sure it's consistent with the information that you've already verified through uh, documentation. You want to always view either the original record or in this case the transcript of the original record in order to see if there's any additional information that was not included in the index or which would be uh, helpful to finding additional uh, individuals in your family. 
Now, in this case, this is, a, is an actual national burial index, uh, and it's a transcription of the index. So there really isn't an original document to go to. If you determine that the individuals that you're seeing on the screen are the same person, then add the source to your family tree. You take the information and copy it into the, the uh, record that you've already created for this individual on your family tree. If you found a new individual, then obviously you can create a new individual in your family tree. In this case, all you have to do is click on the little arrows and move the information over. Be careful and be discriminatory in looking at the information that you don't move information that you don't uh, that you can't verify or that you have uh, that replaces information which you feel is more correct than that you find than the information you find in the record. And be sure and save your changes. In this case, uh, find my past asks you to update your tree. Now this brings up another question, and that is the need for having your family tree in a variety of programs. Uh, in this case, um, and in the cases of the others, you could end up with a number of family trees. Well, what I am, my opinion is that um, having your family tree in all of these programs is valuable because of the record hints and the assistance you're receiving. I don't. I, I would usually pick uh, one of the programs or another program to be. Uh, my primary program where I would keep my information and then I would use all of these other programs to um, accumulate record hints about my family um, without uh, my particular intervening or effort and that way I can uh, benefit from all of these programs. However, you may very well choose to have Find My Past as your primary uh, database program, particularly if all of your research happens to be in, in the British Isles. So now you go back and repeat that process over and over again with as many records as are suggested. Now I would, uh, my experience is that as you, as you um, choose or accept these um, uh, record hints that have been made on the various programs that the program itself becomes educated and will find more uh, information for you uh, in the form of record hints. I might remind you that the record hints can only work with accurate and specific uh, data. If what's in your family tree is not correct, then you need to make those corrections in the family tree before the record hints will be helpful or useful uh, to you. So uh, it, it's kind of important, and not just kind of important, but very important to go through and clean up your records uh, periodically, uh, add in information that you found from additional documents and or records, and, and do what's necessary to maintain a, um, a, a, an adequately accurate a family tree, and then make sure that you use the documents that you find from the record hints and from elsewhere to correct or add to or augment the information that's already in your family tree. As you increase the accuracy and detail that are in your family tree, then, then the record hints will become more useful and more frequently uh, possible. Um, in any of these cases, the record hint, in any of these programs, excuse me, online programs, the record hints are limited uh, by which records have been indexed and which records have been um, designated for, uh, for inclusion in their record hint program. So uh, there's sometimes a way to find out what those program, what those limitations are, but not always. Always uh, review your facts and evidence and events. Um, this, this is important because even if you uh, enter records from uh, information directly from records, it may be that the records turn out to be contradictory. Uh, presently, I'm aware of situations where there's families showing uh, children born 
uh, before their parents, children who were born after their parents died, uh, children who are not related to each other, all sorts of situations and difficulties, and reviewing the facts periodically about your, your family tree uh, can help to uh, rectify, clear up, and clean up some of those problems. So when you're looking here closely, what you're looking for is uh, consistency. Whereas uh, the burial after the death is the christening after the birth and so forth. Now there is on family, on, on Find My Past, there is a, um, a relations view that lets you see all of the members of the family. This will also help you to see if you have multiple spouses, if you've made had duplicate entries and other things that help to clean up the information that's in your in your family tree. And find my past copies of the sources are automatically added to the, to the media page for each individual, so you have a direct met, uh, way of going back and looking at the uh, at the documents in the program. Now, in some cases, you may want to become more specific um, if the record hints aren't there and if you're um, looking for an individual uh, specifically, then you can actually go into each individual uh, record, each individual record collection on Find My Past and um, search. So basically, if I search through the, what's called the A to Z of record sets, which is a link off of the search page. Then it lists all of the different databases that are part of the website. And it gives you ability to search through that list and come up with a, and find out if there's a specific um, website that's, uh, excuse me, collection that is uh, applicable to your ancestors. Um, filtering that um, view out is uh, rather limited. You're limited to, to some major geographical areas. Uh, this may be a little bit helpful, but doesn't cut down the number of, uh, of items that you view in the list. Now, once you get down to an individual record collection, such as this 1881 England, Wales, and Scotland census record uh, search engine, this is that census, then you can ha then you have a very detailed uh, search uh, capability with Find My Past. You can search for first names, last names, and then all of the information that's listed with the blanks down the side there um, that. Uh, could be added in and to uh, help find and differentiate between people of the same names. Okay, here's a little bit blown up view of the same uh, list. You can see that you can get very specific even down to who was on a specific ship, um, all sorts of things. Now another thing important about Find My Past and many of the other uh, large online uh, genealogy programs is that they have formed strategic, strategic partnerships with other websites. In this case, Find My Past has formed partnership with Family Search, the British Library, the New York Genealogical and Biographical Society, the New England Historic Genealogical Society, Naval and Military Press, the Society of Genealogists, and National Archives of Britain. Um, the Society of Genealogists is another large um, English and uh, Great Britain named um, organization. So this gives a little bit of breadth. Now one, this brings up a little bit of a different problem, and that is that some of these websites have various um, uh, other websites that, that uh, do uh, maintain certain uh, types of records. In this case, Find My Past has a newspaper project called the British Newspaper Project with the British Library to digitize uh, their collection of British newspapers. Um, this is, is available, but it's subject to a separate um, subscription fee 
from Find My Past. So if you already have a um, subscription to Find My Past, then you're, um, you're still going to have to pay additional to get copies of the newspapers or other things that are not part of that, that subscription. Now these circumstances concerning the subscription, the levels, uh, the costs, all of those things uh, change uh, quite frequently actually. Uh, sometimes they run specials, sometimes there are um, changes in the program that require the uh, uh, different types of subscriptions. So uh, we should all be aware that this is, there's a, always a, a possibility that these things could change. Okay, well, we'd like to thank you for watching today. Uh, remember that these videos are uploaded to the BYU Family History Library YouTube channel on youtube.com. And uh, once again, we'd invite you to subscribe uh, so that you receive notifications of the newer videos going up. Thanks again for watching.